I had you guys like that. Um, before I bring out the cast, um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Melissa. I'm from thetelevixen.com. We do a lot of uh, coverage of Lost Girl on our site, and uh, it's definitely a show that's near and dear to our hearts. Um, and just before I bring uh, your cast out, um, showrunner uh, Emily Andrus was supposed to be here today and couldn't make it. She sends all of you a big hello and her love. So if everyone wants to say, hi, Emily. <laughs> So first, hmm, we found out this season that he's not only a bartender, he's the Blood King. Let's bring out Rick Howland. And this past season, we found out that his real name is Haley. <laughs> I'm still laughing over that. Let's bring out Casey Collins. Hail. Now, she puts the doc in Docubus. Need I say more than Wolf for this next one? Chris Holden Reed, everybody. You know her as Bo's claimed human, her sidekick, her faithful sidekick, Kenzie. Big round of applause for Kenzie. and the succubus herself. Let's bring out Bo, Anna Silk. Before we get into some questions, uh, I just want to give a very quick shout out to the man who without this, this show would not be happening. Our executive producer, creator, Jay Firestone. Big round of applause for him. Point, season two is wrapped, gearing up for season three in 2013. Um, we're going to take this time to ask some questions about what's happened uh, so far and uh, maybe tease a little bit of what's to come. So let's get started with uh, Anna. Now, <laughs> Bo has really grown over the past two seasons. You started off as a troubled, confused young woman, and now you're simply a force to be reckoned with. What is your favorite aspect of photo play? Okay. Wow, this is so not on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a tiny little Wait. switch at the bottom. Wait, how? <laughs> Hello? Hello? No. Hello? No. Oh. oh that's a... Hello. Hello. Okay, now it's working. Now it's working. Um, Hello. What was the question? <laughs> what is my favorite aspect of both? First, I just have to say that I'm so thrilled that you guys are all here. It's so, yeah. so awesome. <laughs> came from really far away, including some lovely ladies from France, right, the front row. So thank you so much for being here. Um, my favorite aspect of Bo is, you know, she's just always taking risks. She's always putting herself on the line, whether it's a risk with her emotions, with her life. Um, and I just like that she keeps putting herself forward like that and taking those risks. And every single time she always finds her strength in that you know she, she's strong she always she always ends up being strong and i really i like that and i admire that now chris last season I just, I just want to say for one second this is so typical of ksenia solo <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Awesome. So, Chris, last season we got to see a different side of Dyson, um, especially in Brother Bay of the Wolves. We got to learn about Dyson's past, uh, including the fact that he used to have a pretty kick-ass accent. <laughs> um, did you have to do a lot of preparing uh, to bring Dyson back to his warrior days for that episode? Absolutely not. I wake up in the morning looking just like that. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was a real... It was a great experience doing that episode, you know, and it was a, it was a great opportunity to sort of broaden Dyson. You know, bringing the, the accent was a risk that Jay and the, our producers let me go with, which was lovely, and I managed to bring it back a few times. Um, but you know, just whenever we can bring history and, and, a, and a, you know, different layers to the show, I think that really adds to the depth of what we're doing. And uh, as for preparing, it was just, they gave me sort of free reign and we just had as much fun as we could. Now, Ksenia, in the uh, latter half of season two, Kenzie really proved that she's more than just Bo's claimed human. Um, she's really proven herself as a valuable member of this team. Did she now? Yes, she did. <laughs> Hello, standing up to that, Norn. <laughs> um, can you tell us if we'll see the consequences of some of her actions carry over into the upcoming season? No. <laughs> I mean, why bother? Uh, no, Kenzie would be pretty, pretty boring if she didn't have to uh, pay for all her actions. So I think she, um, she just gets into a lot of trouble she could never even imagine getting into. So we get, we get pretty crazy. I'm really excited about it. Very nice. Now, Zoe, poor Lauren went through the emotional ringer this past season. That's mine. Get your hands off it. <laughs> Sorry. She just, seems, she just seems predestined to have to go through all of these emotional roller coasters. And I think the consensus from fans is, is we'd really like to see you find true happiness. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I was going to ask if you'd like to see Lauren find some peace. Or is it more fun to play the emotional, angsty stuff? I don't know. I think we see her. She gets. There's a few fun moments in this coming season where she kind of... We might get after hours, Lauren. I think. <laughs> I think whenever I'm in bed with Bo, it's after hours, Lauren. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, it'd be fun. She's pretty like conservative, but I think what's kind of cool about her is that we don't know a lot about her, so there's room to do anything with her. I think she like might rave on the weekends. <laughs> there's a chance. We've just scratched the surface. That might that. happen this season. Yeah, we just have. <laughs> now, Rick, in barometric pressure, we learned about a uh, friskier trip from his earlier days. Um, would you like to see more of this for your character? And yes. Yes. Thank you, Ksenia. By the way, I'm, I, you know, you can take the bartender out of the dowel, but uh, do you guys need a drink or anything down there? Are you dry at all? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do. Uh, I, I would like to see more of that. It's uh, that was a lot of fun. That particular scene was a, a hoot to do. Um, and uh, Kyla Walker, who played Wei Lin, the lewd one, <laughs> that was so much fun to say. Um, uh, was brilliant, and uh, it was a, a blast. And so, yes, I would love to see more of that. Will there be any new lady friends for season three for the trickster? Woo! Well, it takes quite the lady to turn Trick's head, but uh, you're going you're gonna to see his head turn, possibly. Awesome. Now, Casey, we found out more about your character's backstory in season two. What do you think about Hale's decision to live apart from his family, apart from the wealth and the power, um, and to be more noble and be a, an overall do-gooder? Hello? Oh. <laughs> I didn't want to start something and then it wasn't working, so. Uh, first of all, I, I need one of those t-shirts, first of all. That t-shirt right there that's Definitely lighting up, that is crazy. I think it's actually, it's like responding EQ, to our right? sound. Yeah, it's, it's an EQ. That's, that's really um, interesting. Only Chris Holden Reed would know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> it's so geeky out of What, what, what do you sure think? <laughs> Ladies. 
Uh, what I was saying was, what do you think about Hale's decision to live apart from the wealth and power of his family? Do you think this is commentary on materialism, or um, do you see Hale as perhaps a role model? It's ridiculous. To be honest, he's broke now. <laughs> Stupid. Who would want to do that? It's like Prince Harry leaving. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, Casey. Prince Harry right now, should I? Uh, this is how Casey is different from Hale. Yeah. <laughs> But um, no, I, I think, you know what, he made a moral choice, really. Um, I don't think daddy's any good, to be honest. And, uh, he, you know, I mean, where's mommy? First of all, he named me Haley. I'm leaving, you know what I mean? <laughs> Forget about it. That's just ridiculous. But uh, no, I think it was the right choice. I think as role model, he's a ladies man. I don't know if that makes a good role model, but, um, for his choice to leave, I think, absolutely. He stands on his own two feet. And that's just the kind of individual he is. You can clap now. Now, Chris, Dyson made a huge sacrifice for Bo at the end of the first season by giving up his love for her to the Norn. Um, and we saw all the repercussions of it throughout season two. Is there anyone in your life that you would make that kind of a sacrifice for? Me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would. Uh, he's sitting right over there. <laughs> but, um, God, I don't know what the... Would, would you sacrifice your love for someone you love? I don't know, that's, that's a slippery slope, you know, it's kind of catch-22. I have always kind of thought that Love is the answer, right? So you kind of need it to make everything right. So if you take it away to make it right, I don't know if that, I don't know if that makes it right. <laughs> that was a very convoluted answer. <laughs> All judge right now. Now, some of you have some pretty awesome powers. Some of you have great human qualities that make up for not having powers. Um, is there any... <laughs> that you would like to see that your character doesn't have right now that you'd like to play with at some time? I would, I would, Trick would like it if um, the rest of his group would actually listen to him. <laughs> when he gives them advice, they'd actually do what he says. They kind of do. But then they all go and use their own minds and think, you know, it's never what he really wanted to do. <laughs> think that I, I mean, I always want Vex's power um, to sort of be able to control people. I'd like to read people's minds. I'd like to fly. There's a lot of things I'd like to do, actually. Do you guys remember, and I think this is the right movie, I hope this is the right movie, Children of the Corn? Oh, God. <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to be able to block everything out. Like, my brain has to be a brick, so I don't have to hear Dyson whine anymore. <laughs> Okay, this is, a, this is an old one for me, and you, it's copyrighted, you can't take it. I would want to be able to turn into organic steel that I can manipulate myself on a bio level. I wouldn't need oxygen. I would be immortal. I could touch metal and manipulate it at an atomic level, make a samurai sword that was atomically sharp and cut through anything like a lightsaber. You haven't thought about that Stay tuned for the incoming comic book. I want to be a smurf. <laughs> you want to be a smurf answer. like for a day? <laughs> yes. I don't want to have any power. I might want to bake. There was bakey smurf or somebody, wasn't there? <laughs> I want to be that. I want to be a smurf. I want to read Zoe Palmer's mind all the time. <laughs> did I say bakey smurf? <laughs> Zoe. Yes, you did. Oh, no, no, never mind. Moments pass. <laughs> now, I'm always amazed by the gorgeous costumes you guys wear on this show, and I've actually seen a couple of people dressed up as some of your characters. Um, do each of you have a favorite costume piece? And uh, are any of your costumes particularly difficult to work with? <laughs> well... Anna? <laughs> I remember when we shot our original pilot, 
you know, you work with all the different departments when you're shooting. You've got the wardrobe department and props and all these great departments of which we have the most skilled people. And we were shooting the pilot and I was, you know, I had put all these things on individually but not all at the same time. And it was the scene where I'm battling Vex in the stripper bar. And, um, you know, they kind of suited me up for the day. I had on my crossbow and my knife and on my hip and in my boot. And they called action, and uh, I, started, I was just hitting myself in the head with the, with the crossbow <laughs> as I walked. I couldn't do anything. I looked nothing like a superhero, um, but you know, we figured it out in the end. So sometimes it is a little bit challenging, for sure. Uh, we are so lucky, Ann Dixon, who created really the look of the show. Um, as we always say, we have you know custom fitted pieces and and her creativity and, and the work she has done. Um, frankly, I think we've never looked better. So, <laughs> so thank you, Ann Dixon. It's so wonderful. Is she here? Um, huh? Is she here? No. No. I'll I wish. Tell her. I'll sorry. I'll tell. Her. Okay. Um, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, on like hot days when we have, you know tight leather pants and corsets and it's like plus 30 and you know Anna and I are running in some graveyard or I don't know through some forest and you know it's sometimes it's just it's a little challenging but it adds it adds to the feeling to the flavor so we we don't complain too much yes yes hello <laughs> Oh my god, and all I was going to make a crack about is how sweaty asses add to drama. And that's the end, thank you for coming. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? I don't know. The costumes. The costumes. Are they hard to work in? Um, I'm a guy, you know, I mean, I believe I speak for all the guys. It's, we're kind of lucky that way. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the worst we have to do is take off our clothes. To be honest, we have to worry about fat content and all that jazz, which is a joy. So true. <laughs> oh yeah. So I was just riveted. I couldn't even. Um, sweaty ass. Yeah. Over and over. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't. I. I. I kind of. Uh, my lab coat is a huge piece for me. Like, if I'm not wearing it, I. I feel a little odd. I feel best on the show when I'm in it. I feel like a doctor. But I. The only scene we're missing, I think, from the show is the scene where all I'm wearing is the lab coat. <laughs> That's it. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you listening, Jay? He's writing it down. Lab coat, nothing else. All right, he took a note. We're good. Duly noted. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with Chris. It's for us guys, it's nothing, it's whatever. Um, as long as I have my hat, I'm happy. That's all, you know, that's it. And um, I guess the trickiest part is sometimes I have hair, sometimes I don't. So we always have to adjust the hats accordingly. Sometimes we gotta stick some foam in it. And I got a peanut head. So um, we have to stick foam in it and then I grow hair and then we gotta pull the foam out. It's not inside of his head. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's my biggest issue when it comes the, the to- The guys work. have it so easy. Like, yeah. yeah, I have someone to wrangle my boobs to make sure they're even yeah. before I take. <laughs> Don't reveal all of the secrets. No, we, we do some wrangling. We, we definitely do some wrangling. We all help wrangle. <laughs> it's, yeah, uh, but, yeah, my leather pants in uh, 213 barometric pressure. They were warm. Required some wrangling. And I it required some wrangling. But uh, they, are, they are an awesome pair of pants. And I feel most like Trick when I'm wearing leather. <laughs> Now, it's no secret that fans are divided between Team Lauren and Team Dyson. So, Ian Chris... Are you divided? <laughs> What's it like to compete with each other for both faction? Yes. Well... 
how do we possibly describe this love triangle? Because it is a triangle. You've done a pretty good job on describing it. <laughs> really? No. We've never even talked about it. No, the subject hasn't even been breached. You should say the word triangle on the show once. That's true, we should. Hi guys, how's it going? <laughs> It is, you know, I feel like as soon as I get close to Zoe Palmer, I calm down. I just want to, you know, talk. We play guitar uh, on set together. We do, and we sing songs. She taught me how to play my last song, actually. So, not well. No, no, no. Well, yeah, that's not her fault, that's my fault. Very well. yeah. um, sorry, Love Triangle, we just, did we just demonstrate it? It's like, it's not a challenge at all. There's so much love going on here that we all just play off of each other. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have a good set. <laughs> I, I tweet bad things about you when you're not looking. She knows I never read tweets, tweets so... Tweets, yeah. uh, I don't know, what, what do we talk about? How do we, how do we describe it? I don't think we've ever talked. This might be the most we've ever said about it together. Right now. Honestly, I was going for a threesome, but it didn't happen. I thought that would be excellent closure and a way to breach the teams, bring the teams together, Dude. divide it on the fall, together we My can't. grandma watches the show. <laughs> Sorry. Just to play a little devil's advocate, Anna, who's your favorite? Oh my gosh. What did we just that. awaken? <laughs> the dark fate powers just kicked in. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. My favorite. Um, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm so ready to be crushed. I, I think I might have a favorite. Uh oh. This is the first. This is this is news, people. Yeah. But. I cannot tell you who that is. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's neither of us. It does change a little, you know. His I name is not. Seth Cooperman. <laughs> now, for the three of you, what are your thoughts on portraying Lauren and Dyson as, you know, equals, as equal romantic rivals, and not just making it simply a choice for Bo between a man and a woman? I think that's always been a really uh, strong way that our writing and production team put that together. That has never been about that. It's just about you know, and and it's not even so much a man and a woman. It's more, it's, all, it's more of a human and a fae, and it's just about the limitations that they. Yeah, that's offer. exactly right. Thank you. So, <laughs> well, I meant that one. Um, well done. Keep going. <laughs> I've, I've run out. Can you take over, please? I really like that there's like such an equal draw to both of them. You know, like they're so, they're both so appealing and intriguing and sexy and I'm saying all these nice things about you guys. Uh, but they really are. They're both, they're, they're equals. Um, and that's a real pull for Bo, which I love. I love that, you know, human, not human, man, woman, whatever it is. Um, it's a it's a really equal divide and, and equally intriguing to bow, and I've always really liked that about our triangle. Yeah, it's challenging to, to, to sort of. I think the fact that it's never referenced, you know, the fact that, that it's. I think the only thing that has come up is the fact that that I'm not Faye and what that could mean for our relationship and and my finite life and all of that sort of thing. And it's, it just doesn't come up the fact that it's a male and a female, which I think is uh, kind of groundbreaking. Yeah, I think that's one of the cool things about the succubus. The succubus character is not, it's not gender defiant. You know, it's, she, she needs sexual chi and love and wherever she can find it, she, that's where it comes She's from. She's falling in love with a frog next season. <laughs> now there's no denying the chemistry that all of you have on screen. Are you guys friends in real life? Do you guys hang out besides at Fan Expo every year? <laughs> <laughs> I think that we're very lucky because we have a great cast 
and we have great chemistry. <laughs> For real, I know, like it'd be really cool to tell really high drama stories, but the truth is, we all root for each other on set. We all really love and have really taken ownership of our own characters. We support each other. You know, sometimes we fight a little like a family would, but it's nothing bad. And, um, and I, I apologize. Think we're pretty so. lucky. Go ahead, Zoe. No, no, we do. We're friends. I yeah. love you. I love you, love you, love you. Love you lots. Did you say uh, love you better? Love you lots. It has crossed over a little bit in a weird way, though, because the other day, I was doing a scene where I was in a towel and I was sort of going back to set to, to finish the scene and I saw Rick and I thought, I was like, oh Rick, to go give him a hug and I'm like, no I can't, you're my grandpa and I'm in a towel. <laughs> so we hugged later. It was, it was a weird moment. It was like, oh yeah, no, that's, you're right, go, go. No, it's, um, it's been great. I mean, you kind of find yourself, it seems like each season you gravitate to someone else more you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we've taken trips together, some of us. Um, we've, you know, go to other functions. Um, I tried to sleep over at Chris's once, he wouldn't let me. <laughs> so, I, I, I like, I stayed It was just that he wanted to spoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm okay with playing Xbox and crashing on the couch. I'm speechless now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're very supportive of each other, and uh, you know, acting with these guys is like the best gift ever. So, it's, absolutely, it's, we are yeah, a family. We are the luckiest cast ever, aren't we? Yeah. 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 I do have to. Wait, is it on? No. no. Switch. Okay, switch. Okay, and I do have to give credit to Dave Firestone, who's our executive producer. Absolutely. For putting together this cast. This group, you know, he knew that this dynamic would work, and he was right. So, yay, Jay! Yay, Jay! He literally does not stop working. He's the hardest ma working man in the world. He really is. The fact that he's not working. Are you working right now? You are. <laughs> You're making deals somewhere. Okay. Enough about Jay. What about me? <laughs> anything? Anyone want to say anything? He wanted to spoon with me too, which I also <laughs> thought was weird. <laughs> I had you and the doll too. It was totally inappropriate. <laughs> Self-admitted, I <laughs> can't stop spooning with people. It's not Why true. Is What's going on? Are you alright? Uh oh, this is an intervention. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> we love you, Casey Collins. <laughs> Just in case you haven't noticed, Zoe, you're one very funny woman. Um, Warren has her moments, she's, she's had a couple of funny moments here and there, but she's always so much more serious and responsible. Do you want to see a wild and crazy Lauren at some point? Yes. 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 I don't know, do you yes. want to see that? I think it's the lab coat episode. <laughs> There's body paint and a lab coat and a monkey. Doc's gone wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it would be fun to have an episode where she, uh, I think we do, I think there's a couple things coming up in this season, if I remember correctly. But, um, I don't know. It'd be weird to see her lose control completely. She's so controlled. But yes, ultimately yes. <laughs> now, Chris, I know this is gonna be a really tough question for you. What's it like to be the hunk on the show? <laughs> and what do you think attracted the producers to you for Dyson? I know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, I know it was a couple of things. One, I, the fact that I picked Anna Silk up in the screen test and we broke the drywall in the audition room together when we were making out because we threw each other into the wall so much. Um, the hunk on this show, I don't know, it's such a funny, it, you know, it, it means not eating carbs, it means, um, you know, you know, having to <laughs> look like Jay Firestone and, um, no, it's, it's, 
it's fun. You know, I love it. It's great. It's it's actually given me the opportunity to get in great shape again. Um, I used to be an athlete and then kind of let it slip away as it became an artist. <laughs> now this is like giving me the opportunity to get back in shape and it, it's a lot of fun, but I mean, I don't want it to be something that goes over everything I do. I don't wear tight enough pants to be a hunk in my opinion. <laughs> Now, Rick, your <laughs> um, now, Rick, your character is, you know, he's powerful, he's wise, he's Thank the go-to guy for what, whatever anyone needs, you're who they go to. You get to give all of the crazy explanations, you get to use the lingo. Um, do you like the fact that you bear the weight of that responsibility for the show? Yeah, it's, it's difficult having the responsibility of being a hunk. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, that's not my question. Actually, it's interesting because it, uh, the fake characters in the mythology, uh, what I do in terms of preparation before the scene where I have to tell a monologue like when I, in the outtakes, and it's like, the thing's gonna do, no! what is this? Um, I, I tend to think of the character and I think of when maybe Trick would have come across this character in his real life and in, in his life and had interacted with it so that it gives it that emotional connection for myself, uh, so when I'm telling them the story of whatever they're going to go attack or being attacked by, I have some sort of feeling of, uh, of personal connection to that character, and so it helps me connect to it and tell that story that's, you know, words that you've never ever read before or said before, <laughs> so. Has there been a, what's the most difficult word you've had to say so far? Is there one? The one you can't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the one I've blocked out. <laughs> Um, there was a there was a drink at one point that I'd learned because it was it was the, the drink was called Blackthorn originally and then it changed to Hawthorn. Do you think I could remember that? <laughs> uh, and then there's about probably 15 or 20 other ones that <laughs> I've had trouble with throughout. But we get it eventually. I get it out. We get it he out. always gets the job done right. <laughs> with style and panache. Now, Ksenia, some of the tears this past season were because of you, because of your breakup with Nate. How hard is it for you as an actress to go from, you know, the more comic role that, that you play on the show and being the comic relief in a lot of cases, to the more serious tone of, of that scene? Can we just take a moment to remember Nate? <laughs> so, um, I feel really lucky as an actress. I think one of the greatest lessons I've learned is that you never want to get comfortable um, because then you stop growing and you s stop evolving as an artist. So Kenzie really keeps me on my toes that way because I never know which emotion is, is coming next and it's a really delicate balance in the fact that I get to kind of experience two of the extremes. Um, it's really, like I said, it keeps me on my toes and, and I love that because I, I love a challenge. So thank you, Kenzie, for not letting me get bored. Now, Anna, you've had some seriously tough battles to fight in seasons one and two, and uh, a lot of stunts, and from what I understand, you do a lot of them on your own. Have you ever been hurt, and do you enjoy the athleticism of the role? I do enjoy it. <laughs> How about now? Okay, I do enjoy doing a lot of the stunts. It's really fun. I mean, you know, and it really kind of informs the character. Bo can kick ass, and there's times where I actually feel like I'm kicking ass. I'm not, <laughs> but I really feel like I am. Um, so it's really, really fun. And I think in first season, I heard, I always have an, uh, an annual leg injury on set. <laughs> um, not bad injury, but first season was by far the worst. And I hurt my leg really badly because I was rehearsing this kick that I wanted to be awesome. So I was rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and I rehearsed so much that I couldn't walk the next day and I couldn't walk properly for two weeks. And as a succubus who heals, we couldn't have that on the show. So there's several shots of Ksenia and I and Chris and I that were sort of filmed from the waist up and I'm holding their hand while we walk <laughs> underneath to try to look a little smoother, you know. Um, we kind of, we worked our way around it. but. 
So, but for the most part, I don't get hurt. I get to work with a really great stunt team, really great stunt doubles, and uh, really great actor doubles, too, who are incredible. So, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm really lucky that I get to do it. Let me just say one thing about how much Anna Silk has changed in the last three years. When we first started working together, you know, she was, she was pretty girly, and you had to be really careful about what you did with her. Beginning of this season, we had like a sort of fight sequence. She kicked my butt. Like, I had to try to restrain her, and I couldn't. She kept breaking away. I'm like, Jesus, this woman has gotten strong. <laughs> like, honestly, you've gotten so much stronger in the last three years. Good on you. Casey, you mentioned earlier about Hale being a bit of a womanizer. Are you that smooth in real life? And, did your fan base increase after that shirtless scene? Um, you had mentioned before about your character being a womanizer. Yes. Um, and did you, um, are you that smooth in real life? And did your fan base increase after you took your shirt off in season two? And we all thanked you for that. <laughs> This is a very common moment. He desperately, he uses hand cream non-stop. Hello, does anyone have any hand lotion? No, apparently. I'm having deja vu. So not only does he like to spoon, he's always constantly lubed. He's a sniffy spooner. We love Daisy Collins! No, I am not that smooth in real life. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, I mean, I, I just, I love, you know, KC loves people, so he can never really be a ladies man, because he just he loves people in general. And um, my grandma raised me, man. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, with regards to... He didn't give you ladies man tips? <laughs> With regards to, <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, but I hope that. we should get um, Anna to translate it because we have some French guests. So and she's she's good. She's good. Um, with regards to, uh, I mean, taking my shirt off. I, but my no, the fan base didn't go up. I don't think no. Yeah, did. What, what you did his fan base yes, go up when he took off his shirt? Yes, it did. One thing I must say is... Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> no, one thing I must say is that I really appreciate all the comments on like Twitter and Facebook. It was phenomenal. Um, you know, Chris is an amazing hunk. He's a very humble hunk. I would never want to even attempt to take that role. It's it's not... He took fun. it and ran with it like as far... I couldn't catch up. I'm like, For a week back, he back, oh. Yeah. He played some bluegrass on his washboard yeah, stomach, too. It's just, it's really... <laughs> I'm so embarrassed right now. Seriously, yeah. Do you know how happy I was getting to, like, stand in front of that APAC? I mean, that was, like, it was intense. I, I wasn't even expecting that. I was like... You forgot your lines I, I every can't, take. What? I don't... What? APAC. <laughs> Who? Hey, What's moment. my name? No and Casey required. is smooth. I, Casey and I worked together on a TV show years ago. It was, we were both guest stars on a TV show where he was a hitchhiker and I was the stupid girl that picked him up. And um, we met on that set that morning cool. and he literally glided towards me, shook my hand, got into the trailer beside me and all I could hear was, when I move, you move. <laughs> So, do you still want it to be more about you, KC? Like I said, we love KC Collins. <laughs> My cheeks hurt. Move on. <laughs> so now here's something for all of you. Some of you we've seen flashback episodes. Um, for those of you who haven't had one or would like to have another, 
Um, where in time would you like it to take place if you were to have a flashback episode and a, a flashback scene in an upcoming episode? As, as long as Crick is never too young enough that I keep to, get to keep playing him. You know, I don't want to see Crick at a teenage. <laughs> that won't fly. But uh, yeah, uh, early in his life when he had family, I'd like to see more of that. I'd like to see Bo when she was like six or seven years old. I'd like to see what she would have been like when she first started interacting with other kids her own age and would there be a, would there have been any sign of her fayness then? It would be kind of cool to see. Yeah, I think I'd like to see Kenzie around eight or nine, just see her in her home with her mafia dad and her crazy mom and what that was like and you know what led her to kind of run away and live on the streets and I think that'd be really fun. Not fun. You know, sad, but, <laughs> but fun, sad. So fun to explore tragedy as an artist. <laughs> and the safety of our little artistic world. Um, I guess for Dyson, three words. Quest for fire. <laughs> ah, yeah. Friend of you get that reference? <laughs> Thank you. I want to see the party animal that Lauren was in university. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I think I want to see Fast Forward episode. I want to see Lauren in like 20 years. I want to know what that Lauren is, I think. Kenzie and Lauren are dead, everyone else is alive. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sad but true. I'm moving with you. Just like that. And I'm moving. I'm gliding, baby. I'm gliding. <laughs> Um... <laughs> You've created a monster. <laughs> really have. I don't know, for Hale, I would just, I think I would like to see a little bit more of the uh, family life to kind of, you know, see, you know, how we got along with, other, like, where the, the issues came in. And, um, that's it. Hey, are you dressed like Dyson? <laughs> nice. Well done. Thanks, brother. Are there any hails out there? I think that's what he's really getting at. That's not what I'm Yeah. We're going to yeah, burn right that here. guy later. Speaking of Hale and Kenzie, some of my favorite episodes are when the two of you team up and become this little dynamic duo, and we got to see that happen again in season two. Um, will we get to see you guys work together again in season three? We got some drama coming. <laughs> things get things get quite complex. As life does. As life does. That's right. So, I mean, what more could you expect? But I think as a combination, we would be we we could rival any like team out there, any sort of comic book hero. Actually, that's the wrong place to say that. <laughs> wrong place to say that. But that's how much confidence I have in our abilities as a team, our abilities as a team. We're just, we're, I think we'd be good as a team. Yay Thanks, team. Thanks, Casey. Yay team. Yay team. Now, before we throw this over to some uh, fan questions, I have a question for all of you. Our audience has really grown even more since we were here last year at Fan Expo, as you can see from, from the crowd that's here. amaze you that even as we're approaching a third season that we're still bring that you guys are still bringing in new fans it is such a huge compliment to us thank you so so much and you know we have so much fun and we're just so happy that you guys are still entertained and and you know in love with these characters as much as we are and really thank you it's so incredibly humbling we love seeing you guys we love talking to you on twitter um, and all the social media outlets. <laughs> that was my part. Now the more <laughs> that was my heart thumping the <laughs> Oh, you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can you guys hear me? No. no. Oh. Yeah, like baby. No. Yeah, these things are crazy. Anna, don't put your hand on the aerial. Microphone 101. 
It's really great to see, like you said, the audience has grown. We have such a diverse audience. You know, I meet people who say like, I watch this with my wife, I watch this with my son, I watch this with my grandma. It's like, it, it's so <laughs> And it's really, it's kind of a family show in a weird sort of way, uh, depending on your family. But um, it's really, really an honor to do something that you love doing with a group of people that you love working with and then have people respond to it this way. It's really, really amazing. And we thank you guys so much, really. We really do. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd also, if I could quickly just give a shout out to the Twitter fans who couldn't be here today because they're really far away, maybe. Uh, but a shout out to all of those for following and watching the show. Yeah, Thank you guys you. are awesome. You guys are awesome. And uh, I tend to have tunnel vision, so I want to acknowledge, you know, left and well, right. <laughs> Depends which way you face him or right. But I. Uh, so, um. The mic's never that. Yeah, so I want to acknowledge all of them. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. So we have a, why is everyone laughing? <laughs> so we have a few people that were selected to ask some questions. If you could just please uh, make your way to this microphone right now. If you, oh, it's already been arranged for you to come up. Uh, head on up now, and we'll get those questions in. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, okay. go ahead. First, I have four questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just First, limited to one, because we've got a few people and it wraps in a few minutes, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, for, then I'll just ask Hannah. Um, a lot of actors are known for one character. So for you, how does it feel to no longer be known as Anna Silk, the crazy flight attendant, <laughs> and now known as Anna Silk, the succubus? I think it's great. <laughs> you know, the crazy flight attendant was fantastic. But, I mean, to be known as a character that gets to do so many different crazy cool things, I could not ask for something better than that. I couldn't ask for more than that. So and I'm if, very happy. If people don't know what I'm talking about, just YouTube and so crazy flight attendant. <laughs> it's the first video. Thank you. Hi. Love your show. Thank you. Um, this is actually a question for the producers if they're here. The music is amazing, and it's really hard to find. <laughs> and some stuff you can't actually buy in Canada. I was wondering if there's going to be like a Lost Girl music. You know what? Something. We we're going to have to get Mr. Firestone to come up here to answer your question at some point. Um, I don't know because I actually I just don't have the answer to that. But the music is amazing. In case you missed the question, she was wondering if there will be a Lost Girl soundtrack. And the music. So, <laughs> all right, Showcase, uh, which have been very supportive as a broadcaster for this show, have a great website. Go find it. All the music's there, and we work like dogs to get you the coolest stuff. So go there, find it, seriously. Showcase, some website. Oh, yeah, Showcase. Showcase.ca. Hello. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> um, thank, I just want to thank you guys for, for doing this for your fans. That we really appreciate it. And my question to you, um, Anna and Zoe, is um, my friend and I are definitely divided. Um, she's, she's Team Dyson. I'm Team Lauren. Which one of us is going to be happy in season three? <laughs> Gosh, we can't tell you, but <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> Come on, what are you? Come on. Will someone be happy? Well, will one of us be happy? <laughs> one of you will be happy and maybe both, maybe neither. I don't know. I really can't say. I'm, I can't say. There's nothing I can say. But keep watching. Thank you. I, I'm so glad I, I made the trip. I flew here to see you guys. So oh, thank dream you so come much. true. Thank you. Thank you.
outstanding job on the show. I was just wondering, season two, we found out a lot about the different uh, characters. There were a lot of revelations, a lot of things were learned. I was wondering what you think the most important thing your character learned in season two was. That's a good question. 